Hello, Texans, and welcome to the NFL Scouting Combine in Indianapolis. I'm Mark Vandermeer with John Harris, and we are live. Great to have you with us as Lovey Smith is about to begin his press conference from Press Conference Row. That's my term for it, Johnny. Good, good call. It's a good call because they have all these podiums set up, mm-hmm. and you'll see his in just a moment here. We are on Radio Row, which should be called Digital Row, perhaps, because there's a lot of digital media here in addition to radio. I think it's mostly digital at this point. But by the way, on that note, we will have Texans All Access from right here, 6 o'clock tonight on Sports Radio 610, and Lovey Smith will join us on the show. But you're going to see him live in just a moment, taking questions, John, from not only the local media in Houston that makes the trip here, yeah. but the national media as well. What are some of the questions we expect Lovey will get thrown his way? I mean, it's got to be Deshaun Watson, one of those. I would imagine they're – how close are we to Chicago? I mean, Indianapolis to Chicago is – It's uh, a few hours. It's a few it's hours. Easy. There's a lot of Chicago people that we've run into that mm-hmm. had experiences with Lovey. I'm sure they're going to ask about maybe his time in Chicago and then obviously being with the Houston Texans. And then it becomes about team building, mm-hmm. coaching staff. you got the coaching staff together. I think this is the first time – I think it's the first time we'll have talked to Lovey. We, you and I have – where he's had the coaching staff set in place. So I'm sure there'll be questions about that. And invariably, free agents. Mm-hmm. Which free agents do you want to re-sign? Justin Reed's name might get brought up, because I know that was a talking point a little bit with Nick yesterday. Um, and then just getting through this combine and looking at prospects and what he wants to look at at prospects. I think any and all those things will get touched upon. And I might, my guess is if I'm a betting man, which I'm not, <laughs> but I know the lingo, if I'm a betting man, I'm sure the words Big Sandy are going to come up at least once. You think at so? At least once in a conversation. Interesting. Should Big we make Sandy, that bet over under? We're loving. I, I bet it doesn't come up at all. I bet Big it comes Sandy, up once. Uh, John McClain will not be asking questions today. So Big Sandy will not come up from him. And I bet it doesn't come up today. I think this is much about what you just mentioned. Right. Also, just being here in general, being, a, to, being able to evaluate all these prospects is so important to building the 2022 Texans. And we had Nick Casario on yesterday, 24 hours ago. You saw him live. We had him on Texans All Access last night. Nick Casario and Lovey Smith working very well together, their staffs, to try to put together this team. that since the staff has come into place that there's been a lot of feedback given to Casario's crew because they have their opinions, of course, but they want to know about the coaches. What do they think? How will these players, whatever players they have their eye on, fit into the particular scheme of Lovey Smith's defense, Pep Hamilton's offense, and the position coaches that work for them? No doubt. This is that interesting part of the year. Even if a staff... to 10 days, which seemingly that's the way it's been in Houston, the coaches get involved in the process. They've got new eyes on a player. Hey, I've never seen Icky Aquano from NC State. I mean, why should that coach have seen him? I mean, George Warhop is coaching the Jacksonville offensive line last year. He's not concerned about Icky Aquano. Now that he's here, okay, it's the offseason. You start thinking about what's going to happen to number three. All right, I'm going to dive into Icky Aquano film. Those are the things that coaches start getting involved with. The scouts have laid the groundwork, and, hey, these are the guys that uh, you need to take a look at. We think are guys that we would, uh, would make a good fit here mm-hmm. for the Houston Texans, and away you go. One other aspect I think becomes really interesting that we'll oh. talk about later. Yes. It's the fact that Lovey Smith has recruited some of these players that are here and coached some of them as well. That's a good point because he was in college football. Lovey Smith at the podium now. Be the new Texan head football coach. And um, first art of business was to get the staff in place. Uh, we've completed our staff. Next art of business is about, you know, personnel. You know, coming to the combine is the first opportunity, I feel like, to really – you know, kickstart that next year. Um, there's a lot of information you can get from here. Um, we're having meetings, of course, at night. Can't wait to see some of the workouts on the field. Um, so the process has started. Uh, again, there's a lot of excitement. Uh, uh, you know, personnel first is about to draft, free agency, uh, all of those things. Can't wait to get started with those two. Take your question. How is the priority of, how is the priority of positions on defense? Over time as your defense has evolved over the years. Where is that now? 
I don't think the priorities have changed much. Um, you know, the engine of every defense is a defensive line. Um, there's a certain look we would like it to have, a uh, certain guy we would like to coach it. We have a profile for every position up front. This past year, of course, me being a defensive coordinator, we got a jump start on, on letting the guys see exactly how we're going to play defense. We had a few players that uh, had pretty good years based on the first time out. Lot, some potential, um, you know, normally that improvement from anything, you know, game one, game two, uh, first year to second year, can't wait to get started on that. We don't give, you know, starting positions out this time of the year. I'll start with that. But I, um, I got a chance to see Davis in a lot of different situations last year. You know, early on, uh, he wasn't starting, so uh, he worked against the one defense quite a bit. I love his demeanor. He's a smart guy. He went to Stanford, right? Smart guy. Um, teammates buy into him. And I also got a chance to see a lot of the young quarterbacks in the league play. And I thought Davis played about as well as most of them. Um, is it was important too uh, for, of course, to bring to keep Pep Hamilton on board. You know, of them being able to work together two years in a row. So uh, again, I'm pumped up that you know he'll be leading us and excited about uh, about his future. Well, uh, you know, both of those are, you know, I can't talk in specifics about players, but, uh, of course, I'm aware of, you know, I'm a fan of college football in general, and both of those guys uh, had outstanding college careers. Uh, both of them are going to have excellent careers in the NFL, along with quite a few others. I think there's a pretty good defensive line class. And, again, starting the process of seeing them, you know, here in this environment, uh, seeing that hopefully some of them work out, and in their pro days they'll tell us an awful lot. Uh, if I'm a defensive lineman, I would like to come to a place uh, like the Houston Texans. Uh, we start up front. Again, it's about, as I said, about the defensive line. We kind of read on the run, athletes getting up to feel, uh, making sacks and things like that. Uh, I think it's a defensive line-friendly system. Casario said that he's open to bringing Justin Reed back to this conversation he's having. How much have you talked with Justin? Uh, Justin Reed is an outstanding player. I'll start off with that. You know, being with him, of course, you know, one year he's a football guy. He, he, like, he wants to know every little detail about why we do things. I love that in a football player. He fits the profile. Uh, when you get in the NFL and you play the amount of time he has, and you get an opportunity to be a free, a free agent, so you're excited for him in that sense. But the business part takes care, care of itself. We'll be pretty happy if if Justin ends up coming back with us. What have you and Pat talked about as far as just the offensive identity of this team? Where you'd like to see it? Well, Pep and I have been together for a long period of time. We've had a chance to talk on those from our time together in Chicago on how we believe offensive football should be played. You know, uh, big emphasis on the running game um, and just how we're going to score points. Um, talking football throughout the years and even last year. So we've had a chance to talk quite a bit about that. I really like our offensive staff, too. You know, we talk about the defensive line, of course, getting George Warhop, a guy that was my, my offensive line coach, you know, my, first, my last NFL job. So um, I think you'll like what we're going to do. I mean, it's one thing about the running game, but you've got to be able to pass the ball, too. And uh, I think we have some pieces in place, but we'll continue to add. You said looking for in the cornerbacks? Well, um, I think like most people, you know, we in an ideal world, you know, receivers are big, getting bigger and bigger. But if you can find a six-feet corner that, you know, that's faster than most people, uh, that's pretty special. Um, we put a big emphasis on ball skills. Uh, to me, the object of the defense is the, every snap is to score and take the ball away. 
we put a big emphasis on that. But um, we won't try to bring anyone in, add them to our mix if, if they don't like to tackle. That's we, we ask our corners to tackle. Uh, they have ball skills. And, of course, but it still comes down to whether you can play man coverage a lot. That's a hard guy that I'm, to find that I'm talking about. That's why it's good, too, to have Dino back in the system again, uh, where we're all on the same page to be able to find those guys. We would. Well, I like some of the choices, Will. I mean, when you're – the one thing about having the type of year that we have, I mean, there's a lot of options that you will have. Um, just like most positions, we weren't satisfied with what we were able to get production from that running back position. If you're running football team, you have to have, a, you know, a bell cow. And, you know, we're going to address probably three guys each week, and they need to be able to contribute some way. Uh, but – I'm kind of stating obvious right now, but just like most of our positions, um, we need to add depth, and not just depth. We need to add good football players there. Uh, Danny is an excellent football coach, and I'm sure we'll be able to do that. I have no idea, and the good part about it is time kind of takes care of everything, you know. Um, uh, I, I just know if – I know Deshaun is an excellent football player, Excellent football players need to be playing somewhere, you know, in the NFL, and I'm, you know, hopefully that'll happen. And if it's not with us, somewhere else. And and I'm sure, as I see in this situation, both of us eventually are going to benefit from the situation. And I just can't wait for that to, you know, speed up a little bit. You say my second stint, my third stint? Did she say? Well, I, um, what I got from that year, you know, a lot of times when you're a new coach coming in, you don't know anything about how things operate. I got a chance to see a lot of the players that we'll be bringing back. I've been with them for a year, know a little bit more about them, how things work in our organization, get a chance to see uh, our competition in our division on who we're catching. So all of those things have to benefit uh, the second year round. A lot of the coaches on the staff, I work with them already. So there's so many things that kind of gave us a head start on where we are and to also see what we can become. We won four games. That's Everybody knows that. But we had options. We had, you know, could could have been a little bit more. And, you know, I think from the Rams winning the Super Bowl to, you know, some of us that aren't, you know, weren't in the playoffs gives us hope. And I think we can, you know, catch up quickly. You know, I talked about the defensive line being the engine of the of the defense, but uh, you know, maybe the brain trust, of course, is at that linebacker position. And uh, I have had an opportunity to be around some great ones. Um, I love some of what we got last year. You know, some players we, you know, it was mentioned. You know, we brought in some guys on one-year contracts, and I knew a little bit about them from. Kristen Kirksey's of the world, the Kamugu Hill of the world, uh, Garrett Wallows played well, Neville Hewitt, I could keep going down the list, KPL. Um, but what I, what we need, of course, is hopefully get some of those guys back uh, because I think they can play. But the profile is in place, and I think you can find those type of guys. And I think it's, a, I talk about being a defensive line friendly system. I think it's a linebacker-friendly system. But some of the guys you referenced, they made their money, and they're in the Hall of Fame and different things like that based on a lot of it playing in the system. So we're excited about that. Yes. Well, you know, it's, you know, talking about guys that are unrestricted, you know, it's hard. But, um, you know, for you to ask that question, you saw some of the things that Malik was able to do. Um, he's an excellent football player. He fits the profile. He's athletic. Um, 
and I've talked about the engine, the brain trust of the defense, but if you say one position where it all starts, it's our three technique on the tackle position. And um, so if we can get Malik back, uh, most of these guys we're talking about, I've, they know, you know, the ones that a lot of you are talking about, they know how we feel about them. And I think Malik was just at the tip of the iceberg on what he can be. There's so much more that he'll be able to do going forward. Lovey, Tim said that, yeah, Lovey, Tim said that um, uh, Pep's offense is very tight end friendly. You know, Tim remember? said that? Yeah, Tim said that Lovey's offense is tight end friendly. Tim who? Uh, been a, been I'm sorry? Oh, okay. Um, okay, I was wondering. There's a lot of Tims I know um, now. Okay. When you look at having Brevin, but also that guy's potentially agreed in the draft, what's your idea? Well, um, ideal option, looking from a defensive point of view. Um, you know, if you're 21 personnel, you kind of know what the fullback's doing. But, you know, if you have a – if your offense is set up to, you know, to be a 12 offense with 12 personnel, now what is that other tight end doing? Brevin is pretty flexible in what he can do. He's probably not the ideal in line why. So with that combination of, uh, I believe, to answer your question, believe in having multiple tight ends. Uh, one more of a Y, other one, the move guy, and then that third guy, kind of combination of both. Um, we had some pretty good tight ends, I thought, this past year. Of course, free agency, some of them are out there with it, but um, we'll kind of see how it plays out. But the tight end position will be a big part of what we're going to do. Yes. Well, it, it wasn't like, you know, we went on a blind date, you know, um, since we were together, uh, you know, last year. So that kind of helped us a, an awful lot. I got a chance to, you know, you come in as a defensive coordinator, coming in, hey, Nick, this is what we're looking at at these positions. Got a chance to see. We've gone through this, this rotation one time before. That has helped an awful lot. What I found out about Nick is that he's a football guy. He does an excellent job, of course, getting personnel. And, again, once you get on the same, I found in my time, you know, being in the NFL as a head football coach, once you can get on the same page with your GM as far as what you're looking for, that's a step, of course, in the right direction. I feel like we were already there. And, uh, and we've just been grinding, trying to get, you know, get the dots to connect and looking forward, knowing what we have to do to, to build our roster up and go forward. Yeah, you know, and, um, you know, I've been in this position a couple of times and, uh, you know, third time being a head football coach. And, uh, you know, each one of them, you kind of say, okay, what did I do differently? I wish I had done this. One of the things that I always said, if I did get another opportunity, that instead of, you know, point, I want this done, you know, a lot of times guys become head coach and they quit coaching. That, that's just not me. I coached a nickel position last year. And I was always going to be a part of it. There's time. People say, well, what are you going to do with you know, time to, you know, the game management and all that? Uh, there's enough time to do that. But as far as uh, delegating, uh, I, we hire guys and put them in a role and expect them all to do theirs. There will be some delegation that goes on as far as roles. But uh, we feel like we have a pretty good handle on that. we got time for two or three more. You say, how important is that? I'm agreeing with what you said. Yes, we would like a prompt resolution to it. Um, but I'm also a patient man, too, you know. And time normally takes care of everything. We understand this is year two. And I know Deshaun wants to play, and we want our – it'll come to a head. I have faith in that. We just have to give it a little bit of time, and, um, and, and hopefully everybody will be happy with it. I'm sure that will be the case. Tavier Thomas, you know, last year coming in, and know anything about him, but you can find athletes that love football. Uh, Tavier Thomas fit the profile. He was just a sponge for information, and that's what you're wanting all the guys to be. With talent, you know, we feel like we have a system that can bring some of those things out. But those are kind of the rewarding things you get from being a coach. When you see a guy that no one, you know, Tavier, most people didn't know how to even pronounce his name, and he just came in and went to work is what he did. And uh, 
His future is bright still. Um, guys like that are out there, and we have to find them. I know Nick and the crew are looking hard for some more Tavier Thomases. And you know, Coach Talk, if you have uh, you know eleven Tavier Thomases, you don't you don't lose a game. I'm definitely saying that. Well, that is important, and um, there's a lot of different ways to do it, too. I know some staffs have all of their coaches here. Some staffs don't have any of theirs. We have a combination. You know, being a new staff, there's a lot to do. You know, most of our coaches are back evaluating, uh, you know, our season video. There's a lot of things to do when you're a new staff coming in, but the combine is important. You know, it's one thing to have an interview, and you see it on video, but another to watch it in its entirety when a player comes into the room. The one good thing about me in college, my time in college too, a lot of these guys, and we interview and I kind of recruited them. I feel like I have a kind of head start on some of that too, but there's a lot of value you can get. Of course, the medical stuff. And then the workouts. And just think, as I tell guys, this is probably the most important interview you may ever have in your life. So it's for sure important. The new way, now you say too high safety. Now you know who I am, right? <laughs> no, I'm just, yeah, I'm just kind of messing with you a little bit. Um, no, I think uh, cover, some form of cover two is going to be around. Uh, it's been around since the beginning of time, and it's not going anywhere. There's only so much. Just think about it. The receivers now, there are some special guys out there. And to just say that a defensive back, can guard that guy man-to-man -man by himself without any help. That's asking an awful lot. And that's what cover two kind of gives you a little bit, a way to double cover some of the special athletes that we have in the NFL. It's been a part of our system every year, seeming like I've been in coaching. You know, uh, people say times are changing. Yeah, I still listen to R&B music, old school music, pretty much every day. But that hadn't changed, good music. Cover two is not going anywhere. There's a place for it, and uh, it's good that more people acknowledge that. So what are you listening to? Well, you say what I listen to on game day. I'm not listening to a whole lot of rap. I'm having to put up with that from the young generation. But um, when I say old school, you can kind of tell what type of music I'm listening to. Some type of R&B music is normally on my, on my iPhone. Thanks, love you. All right, thank you all.